Ready to engage maneuvering thrusters. Are you sure you know what you're doing, Freddy? Of course, Velma. It's just like a big mystery machine, only in space. Like this dehydrated eggplant is the best. <laughs> mm -mm -mm. Hey, guys, don't eat too much of that stuff. Um, Fred? Not now, Velma. Fred, look out! Like this shuttle simulator was the coolest part of the tour. Well, it's not over yet. We've still got one more stop. Welcome to Mission Control. Oh, and you'll have to wear these tracking pins. See those green blips up there? That's you guys. Make sure not to take them off. We've had some security issues on the base recently, and we want to make sure you stay safe. What kind of security issues? Don't worry, it's nothing we can't handle. Well, that's it for the tour. You'd better get going. You don't want to be late for your own ceremony, Velma. Thanks, Captain Treesdale. Let me introduce the two finalists. Elliot Blinder with his project Soybeans, Rocket Fuel of the Future, and Velma Dinkley with her experiment How Earthworms Are Affected by Zero Gravity. Unfortunately, we've only got room on the shuttle for one of these projects. And so, the winner of this year's Future Scientist Contest is... Velma Dinkley! Yeah! Yay, Velma! Now, everyone is welcome to help themselves to the refreshment table. Huh? <laughs> Zucchini, anyone? Wow, Velma, that's a great trophy! I have to say I'm pretty excited. Not only did I win, but I got to meet my favorite scientist, Janet Lawrence. She even signed this. Janet has degrees in astrophysics and biochemistry. I didn't know they made bubblegum cards for scientists. Well, they don't really. My science club made them. How worms are affected by zero gravity? <laughs> that has no relevant application. On the contrary. Seeing how organisms that possess a hydrostatic skeleton are affected by reduced gravity could further agricultural developments and help to colonize other planets. Mine's still better. Well, there's always next year, Elliot. <clears throat> Hi, Professor Lawrence. Please, call me Janet. Wow. I mean, okay. Janet works with ETIS here at the base. It stands for the Extraterrestrial Information Search. You mean aliens? Exactly. So, Janet, I was hoping to get a look at the data on your current research project. It's classified. Recently, we've had some complications. Complications? Hopefully, it's nothing to worry about. So, Janet, uh, do you think I uh, have the right stuff uh, to be an astronaut? Being an astronaut takes a lot of work. I know I could never do it. I'm afraid of heights. Wow. <gasps> Over here. What, what is that? <laughs> oh, no! The alien! <laughs> What was that thing? That was the complication. <laughs> I warned you this could happen. Well, from now on, we're not taking any chances. We've already locked down the base. No one is permitted to leave. What about the shuttle flight? I'm sorry, Janet, but until we find that... whatever it was, the launch is cancelled. Professor Lawrence, could that really have been an alien? Anything is possible, Velma. Last month, I sent a probe to collect comet debris, and it picked up something very unusual. It looked like an egg, possibly an alien egg. Earlier this evening, I was about to run a preliminary scan of it, but then the egg hatched. I tried to warn everyone that there might be an alien on the loose, but no one would believe me. That must have been one big egg. The alien is four feet tall. That's just the thing. The egg wasn't very large at all. Lucky us. It's going through an alien growth spurt. Don't worry, Janet. We're going to get to the bottom of this. You guys go on ahead, but please, be careful. First thing we should do is check out the lab. Uh-uh. Scoob and I are staying right here. Yeah. Right here? Where we just saw the alien? Suit yourself. Why does she always do that? Like, wait for us! <laughs> <laughs> 